the denomination of the workshop. So I will talk about manifest duality from a worship perspective. And uh, um, these are um, works based, it's a talk based on some works made by in, col in collaboration with my colleague uh, in uh, Naples University, Patrizia Vitale. This is uh, our former uh, student, now PhD student in Edinburgh. And uh, actually, this is another work with uh, the actual PhD student that we have in Naples. So, um, first I will give an introduction, a motivation for how I think that it's important to study T-duality in a manifest way. Um, so I will give some, um, I will describe wh what does it mean to have a manifest T-duality at the level of the world sheet, so discussing the double world sheets. And then I will introduce the concept of post only T-duality and Rimfeld double. Um, in particular, I will show you an explicit sample Dreamfield double uh, that we will use in two explicit examples. One is the isotropic rigid rotator and the other one is the principal chiral model. And I will conclude with some conclusion and perspectives. So, um, uh, let me just remind very general things. So, uh, two nonlinear sigma models with different Lagrangian densities may correspond to the same classical theory when, under certain conditions, there exists a duality. That is to say, there is, uh, in general, an involution that generates transformations which maps one model to the other but leave the physics unchanged. So, um, we know that in uh, string theory, uh, dualities play an important role and um, actually they are used as a tools for disentangling the full symmetry structure of string theory. And they have led to important insights in understanding the geometry of the space-time from the string point of view. Um, further helpful information could be inferred from the sigma model constructed by making the duality symmetry manifest at the Lagrangian level. So, um, uh, that uh, actually, um, let me only say two words about T duality in string theory. So, T duality implies that in many cases, two different geometries for the extra dimensions are physically equivalent, and string physics at a very small scale cannot be distinguished from the one at a large scale. So, uh, T duality is a clear indication that ordinary geometric concepts can break down at the string scale. Um, the duality has been a valuable guide for finding new phenomena such as the brains, mirror symmetry, uh, exotic solutions. Uh, we know very well that in case of circular compatification of one space coordinate, the duality is encoded for bosonic closed strings in the simultaneous transformation of R going in alpha prime over R and PA transforming in this way, where these are the winding modes uh, that play the role of momentum for the, for the, the dual coordinate x tilde to x a. So, um, but, um, so this is in the simple case of circular compatification, but if we consider toroidal compatification uh, on a D-torus, T-duality is described by OD, the, the, the group ODDZ, the, by transformation belonging to this group. Um, and, uh, but I would like to stress since now that already at the classical level, the indefinite orthogonal group ODD naturally appears in the Hamiltonian description of the usual bosonic stream model in these space-time dimensions, so independently on the compatification on a torus. Because actually, if we consider the usual action of the string in G and B uh, con uh, background, a uh, non-necessary constant, so if we vary S with respect to XA, we get the equation of motions with uh, the usual definition of H and uh, gamma, the, the coefficients of the Levi-Civita uh, connection, um, uh, we get um, we get the, that the, the dynamics of the theory is determined by the equation of motion for the coordinates x a accompanied with the usual constraints in the conformal gauge, and uh, the Hamiltonian density is given by the, the Legendre transformation with respect to the canonical momentum and x dot a. Um, the, the first constraint actually implies that we have also this uh, equality, so uh, this, uh, this equation. So 
uh, actually, uh, we can also um, uh, get age, the density of Hamiltonian, from Elegian transformation with respect to the canonical winding of WA and X prime A. Um, I want to say that uh, actually we can um, rewrite the, 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 the Hamiltonian density in this way where the generalized metric is introduced in terms of G and B. So already at this level, um, we can find the definition of generalized metric that we will see is a, a structure that will appear um, all the time we consider an explicit, explicitly the T duality at the level of the Lagrangian. We see it's an ingredient, an important ingredient in dual field theory, for example. And uh, so we can see that even at this level, the, uh, the Hamiltonian density can be written in terms of the generalized matrix. So H results to be proportional to the square length of, we can define these two generalized vectors, AP and AW in this way, so these are the components of these objects, and so we can think at H as resulting to be proportional to the square length of the, the generalized vectors defined in this way, as measured by the generalized metric H. So, um, in, terms of, uh, the in terms of this generalized vector, the constraints become, can be written in this way. So we can see that the first, um, the first constraint set H to zero, and the second one completely determines the dynamics of the string. So, um, and this is rewritten, this constraint, in terms of this matrix that is actually the invariant matrix of the group of the D. So this is defined, this group is defined by the D times the matrices satisfying this condition. So we find very naturally at this level the, uh, the presence of the ODD invariant metric and of the generalized metric. And actually all the admissible generalized vectors satisfying this constraint, that is the one that really completely determines the dynamics of the strings, are related by an ODD transformation via this, transfor this, this relation. So, uh, in, in order to have uh, a prime P, the, the generalized vector transformed, to solve the first constraint, a compensating transformation has to be applied to, 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 to H. So, uh, in the case of compatification on a uh, torus, of course, this group ODD becomes uh, ODDZ. And um, the equation of motion for the string coordinates are a set of conservation laws on the world sheet. So we find this uh, expression for currents which are conserved in the case in which we have G and B constant. So lo locally, one can express in this, uh, in, in, in this way, we can express uh, the currents um, in such a way to define a dual coordinates in this, in this way. And so only in this case we can find, we can rewrite the, the initial action in this way in terms of the coordinates x tilde a and with a suitable transformation of g tilde and b tilde. And so these uh, are the so-called Boucher rules essentially. Um, so this is what is called abelian duality. So the equation of motion for the coordinates, if we consider a double vector in this way, uh, so we collect the ordinary, uh, the, the ordinary coordinates and the dual ones, we can combine into a single, uh, the equation of motion can be combined into a single ODDZ invariant equation. And uh, this, in particular, this equation for G B equal eta and B equal zero, they represent the duality, the usual duality condition between X A and X T D A. So, um, for closest string coordinates, the dual coordinates satisfy the same periodicity condition, and then the abelian duality of DZ actually maps two theories at the same time into one another. So, this, is, this becomes a symmetry. And this is a symmetry not only of the mass spectrum and the vacuum partition function, but also the scattering amplitudes. So, uh, the ODDZ uh, symmetry suggests at this point to extend the usual formulation of string theory that is based on the polyvalent action by introducing this symmetry at the level of the world sheet sigma model. And so it will be interesting, therefore, looking for a manifestly of the DZ dual invariant formulation of string theory. Uh, 
uh, the introduction of both coordinates, XA and the dual ones, of course, is required if you want to make manifest the duality at the level of the dual sheet. And so such formulation is based on a doubling of the string coordinates in the target space. Um, so the main goal of this new worksheet action would be actually to explore more closely aspects of uh, string geometry. And in particular, if interested in writing down the complete effective field theory of such generalized sigma model that we would like to construct, one should consider also dependence of the background fields on XA and X tilde A, that actually they, are, they remind the dependence on K and W on, uh, on compact dimensions. So in this way, the string effective field theory becomes what is called double field theory. And um, we know that the, the double field theory is a proposal to incorporate T duality as a symmetry of the string effective field theory. Uh, in double field theory, diffeomorphisms rely on an audit destruction that is defined on the target space of a double torus T2D. And the uh, uh, section condition uh, of this kind on fields and on their products has to be imposed in order to have the 2D coordinates. Uh, so the main purpose of the, the, of the, of the double field theory is, is to shed further light on aspects of string supergravity, okay, well, string gravity, we can say, at the level of supergravity, trying to give an answer to the question how the string theory would look like when T-duality is manifested in the sigma model Lagrangian density. So this would be a uh, motivation for studying this kind of topic. And uh, I would like to remind here the construction of two uh, sigma model that exhibits this uh, T-duality manifestly at the level of the worksheet. One is uh, um, the, the worksheet written by Seltri in 1991. So starting from the Florianini Jacquille Lagrangian in 1987 for chiral and anti chiral scalar fields, phi plus and phi minus, that looks like in, in, that, uh, in this way. This uh, Lagrangian, uh, this Lagrangian uh, um, inspired this general string sigma model written by Zetrin in terms of a worksheet Zweibein, uh, two matrices which are symmetric, uh, covariant derivative of function x, uh, x ki, which are the, co the string coordinates in an n-dimensional Riemann target space. At the first level, when uh, in the beginning in these papers, n is not uh, fixed. Um, actually, uh, as one can see, um, uh, of course, this action is not uh, um, loses invariance, manifest invariance on two, dim uh, on two dimensions, uh, covariance in two dimensions. And in order to, to, to have uh, invariance on shell under local Lorentz transformation, a, uh, this constraint, this epsilon trace constraint has to be uh, imposed. Uh, necessary to make the, the action invariant under, on sh uh, under local Lorentz transformations with parameter epsilon. Um, so, uh, and, and furthermore, the absence of quantum Lorentz anomaly implies that the dimension of the Riemann target space in which the string is uh, emerged must, must be an even number. So it's uh, two times d. And um, in case of constant background, the sigma model action can be expressed in this way. So again, uh, in a very natural way, in this model by Zetrin, uh, we have two structures that appear naturally. One is the ODD invariant metric eta, and the other one, again, is the uh, generalized metric HIJ. So um, written this way, the action is invariant under the combined ODD transformation of uh, these double vectors and of H, just precisely as we have seen previously for the general case of, of, um, of the worksheet in string. So in this model, if we define the duality transformation this way, see, if we consider like duality transformation just the ODD invariant metric that actually um, uh, uh, exchange x mu with x tilde mu. So we can find that um, the, 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 the previous action 
uh, that is a functional of x and x still that can be rewritten in this way. So this exhibits the familiar t duality invariance in presence of constant background. That is to say that x is invariant under the exchange of x and x tilde together with the transformation of the generalized matrix, suitable transformation of the generalized matrix. Uh, so S with this action is therefore a first order action which interpolates between SX and SX tilde and is manifestly uh, T-duality uh, symmetric. Um, and much work is still to do, I spoke with the certain some weeks ago here, how to find the new examples of quant quantum consistent models in, uh, of this kind. So um, the non-covariant action, actually written by Zetlin, can be shown ad, uh, to be equivalent to the, to, to the covariant action written by Hall in 2005 that looks like uh, the one that you see here. Uh, um, uh, also here we have a constraint. This is a constraint necessary for halving the degrees of freedom from 2D to D. And actually this is equivalent to the same condition that we have seen in the Zetlin model. Uh, in order to recover the Lorentz invariance in two dimensions. So um, these are the two um, main models that have been written in which T-duality has been um, made manifest. Um, so what we understand, of course, is that the abelian T-duality requires that the two dual target spaces must have abelian isometry groups, essentially. And... Uh, um, uh, and, and the, the two dual sigma models can be shown that can be obtained by gauging abelian isometry. So uh, the T-duality can be performed along the direction of one of the isometries and the dual backgrounds are related by Boucher rules. Um, but um, in 1992, it was shown that duality symmetries can also be associated to non-abelian isometries of the target manifold. And uh, um, in this case, uh, this, these authors, uh, they gauged the non-abelian isometries of the sigma models and actually they constrained the free strength F to vanish. The dual action was obtained by integrating out the gauge fields with the Lagrange multipliers becoming coordinates of the dual manifold. So the notion of non-abelian T-duality is still lacking uh, some of the key features of, of the abelian T-duality uh, in the sense that still we don't have a canonical procedure that would eat the original theory if one is given its non-abelian dual. So it's uh, complicated to, to um, go from one to another uh, theory. Uh, when we find this, um, this kind of, of uh, T-duality. And the further generalization has actually attracted growing interest, which is the so-called poisson lee duality that from, uh, differently from the other two types, from the abelian and non-abelian, does not require the presence of isometry groups at all. So, um, Maybe there are many reasons then to study this poisson lee duality uh, that actually can give new perspectives in theory in, uh, in studying what, does, what, what are called non-geometric backgrounds. And we, um, it's, it's, uh, this poisson lee duality that is not, uh, is not um, based on isometries, but actually relies on the concept of Dreamfeld double. Uh, the standard abelian T-duality refers to the presence of abelian isometries U and D in both du the dual sigma models, and uh, they can be composed into U1 to, to D. So we can say that this group provides the simple sample of Dreamfeld double. We, I will come back on this point later in uh, the talk. Um, so let me first give a definition of Dreyfus double. So a Dreyfus double is the any Lie group whose Lie, whose Lie, Lie algebra can be decomposed into a pair of maximally isotropic subalgebras uh, with respect to a non-degenerate invariant bilinear form on delta. So in this vector space, we have to define, we have to find a non-degenerate invariant bilinear form and uh, uh, with respect to, uh, to, to, to which we can decompose the Lie algebra into maximally isotropic subalgebras. Isotropic subspace means that the value of this form on two arbitrary vectors belonging to the subspace has to, to vanish. 
Uh, maximally isotropic means that the subspace cannot be enlarged while preserving the property of isotropy. So, in general, um, a splitting of the Dreamfeld double in terms of maximally isotropic subspace is called polarization. And when the subspaces involved in the polarization close as subalgebras, we can define a tribal that is called in this way. So we have the Lie algebra, the complexive Lie algebra of the Lie group, and the, the two subalgebras. This is called a Manning tribal. Uh, the set of all the possible Manning triples corresponding, corresponding to a given Dreamfeld double plays the role of modular space. In the case, in the, in the case of the abelian, uh, the, the, the abelian duality, so uh, the, the, the Lie group is U, U, the, the Dreamfeld double is U1 to, to D that can be decomposed in this way with modular, modular spaces that gives also ODD. So, Actually, the ODD duality can be seen from this point of view as a particular case of, um, of, of, of this framework. So, uh, in terms of Dreamfeld double, we can give a classification of T-dualities so far uh, known. So, a classification of T-dualities provided by the underlying nature, you can say the, by the nature of the underlying Dreamfeld doubles in this decomposition. So, we can have a billion, if we have a billion, uh, we can talk about a billion doubles when G and G tilde are both a billion, corresponding to the ordinary a billion T-duality. Uh, we have semi-abelian doubles, so with one of the two G tilde abelian corresponding to the non-abelian T-duality between an isometric sigma model having as, uh, as a target the non-abelian group G and a non-isometric -isom sigma model with target G tilde. And uh, then we have a more, most general case, it is the non-abelian doubles, so including all the other cases different from this one, corresponding to the Poisson Lit duality, where none of the models from the dual pair is isometric with respect to the action of the group acting on its target. So it would be nice to understand how this more general Poisson Lit duality works in, in string theory. And uh, um, it will be also very stimulating to investigate about the physical interpretation and the underlying geometric structures of this more general T-duality. Um, so let's go a little bit more in the, in the mathematical structure of the Dreamfeld double. So uh, we have seen that so the Lie algebra associated to a Dreamfeld double must be is a, a B algebra. So this means that uh, the, the Lie algebra can be uh, decomposed in this way. So with the Lie brackets uh, that assume this form. So we have um, Ti and T tilde I are respectively the generators for G and G tilde. So they have this particular structure um, as, a, as a brackets of the Lie algebra. Uh, the Thule subalgebra define a Libby algebra, and so ge generate respectively the Thule subgroups when we exponentiate these uh, objects. Uh, G and G tilde, so the two groups are dual Lie groups, in the sense that they are dual partners with respect to this decomposition. Of course, the role of the two subalgebras sub can be interchanged, so in, in meaning that G tilde G also is a Lie algebra, is a Libby algebra. And um, we find that a natural invariant ODD matrix, so again, we see that it uh, uh, appears uh, continuously, a, nat a natural invariant ODD matrix eta can be defined on the, um, on, the algebra, on the Lie algebra as duality pairing between G and G tilde, implying the isotropy property. So these, uh, these, define, these objects define precisely an ODD invariant matrix. In particular, I would like to focus now on the Dreamfeld double structure of this group of SL2C, and I will give them motivation for, for that. So the Lie algebra SL2C can be regarded as a real form of the complex Lie algebra SL2 defined by these Lie brackets. So these are the generators explicitly written here. 
And uh, uh, if we take complex linear combinations of these objects, and so we can define an algebra uh, by considering the EI and this object B. So if we do that, we recover the real algebra SL2C with its lip brackets written in this way. So we can see from here that the E are the generators of, of the SU2 subalgebra. Uh, but if we consider together with E these uh, vectors E tilde uh, I, uh, we uh, defined in this way. And so we can, uh, first of all, we can see that these objects, these are dual with respect to, to the natural scalar product that is defined in SL to C, that is this one. Uh, so we find that with respect to this natural scalar product that we can introduce on SL to C, uh, these, are, these vectors are a dual of the, 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 the vectors E, I. So they satisfy these properties. So the dual vector space of SU2 is at, actually the Lie algebra SB to C. So this is the Borel subalgebra that um, is generated by vectors, by, by objects satisfying this the algebra. Uh, so uh, each subalgebra acts on uh, uh, onto the other one non-trivially by the coadjoint action. So SU2 and SB2C in this scheme, they are maximally isotropic with respect to the scalar product that I have defined with in terms of um, in terms of here, in terms of uh, um, this object here. So, um, sorry. So, this uh, SU2 and SB2 are maximally isotropic with respect to that scalar product. And uh, SL2C can be understood as a Greenfield double with the polarization given by this decomposition of SU2 and the Borel subalgebra SB2C. So we can say that SL2C, SU2, and SB2C, this is a Manning triple. So if from this point of view, from the Greenfield point of view, SU2 and SB2 are then dual groups. Now, there is, but the, the, the scalar product that I have so far introduced is not the only one. There is another non-degenerate invariant scalar product I can define on SL2C, and it's defined in this way. So in terms of the, uh, real, the, 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 the real part of the trace of these two objects. So uh, with respect to this uh, scalar product, SU2 and SB2 are no longer isotropic. Um, because the scalar product don't satisfy the, the, the definition that I've given previously. So the, uh, this does not give rise to a the positive definite matrix. Uh, but if we uh, consider uh, the two subspaces spent by EI and BI, the, the object that I have here defined, um, we can define, anyway, a Riemannian matrix in uh, in uh, considering, um, by defining a uh, scalar product in this way. So uh, this is a scalar product actually defined in terms of this one, but in such a way that we can have a Riemannian matrix. So we have two, uh, possi so we have two um, uh, invariant scalar, non-degenerate scalar products on this algebra. Uh, we can, uh, we can, uh, sorry, um, in the double, no we can introduce also here a double notation, so I can consider only uh, the, this vector, generalized, this generalized vector with EI belonging to SU2 and the other one belonging to SB, there's a tilde here. So um, the scalar product, if we consider this, the first scalar product written in terms of the real part of the trace, this defines the ODD invariant matrix, while the Riemannian scalar product, the, the last one that I have defined, this defines a pseudo-orthogonal ODD matrix that corresponds to the generalized matrix. So uh, we, we, we recover also uh, in this way uh, the two 
uh, basic structure that we have found so far. So the ODD invariant matrix and the, uh, the generalized matrix. Actually, uh, one can uh, uh, formally uh, uh, study the Riemann structure, the, 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 the generalized matrix, and uh, uh, this can be mathematically formalized in a way that clarifies its role in connection with generalized geometry. But I don't, know, I don't want to go, uh, I don't want to touch now this, this, uh, this aspect. Um, so, um, sorry. Um, so by now, so this is the structure of uh, the, the, the Dreamfeld double of, of SL to C. Uh, the, the, what I would like now to, to show is to, uh, I would like to construct actually two models that are defined on uh, these group manifolds. And I would like, I want to show that they uh, are examples of, Poisson, they, they exhibit what uh, is called Poissonity duality. Uh, before going that, anyway, let me just um, give some basic uh, definition that maybe can clarify what is the notion of Poisson Lee symmetry, what is the, the definition of Poisson Lee duality. So in general, we know that a coordinate transformation associated to a group is a symmetry of the dynamics if it leaves the equation of motions unchanged in form. You see. If it also a symmetry for the, if it is also a symmetry for the uh, auxiliary geometric structure, that is to say for the symplectic form of Poisson brackets and the Hamiltonian, if we are in the Hamiltonian approach, or if it is a symmetry of the action of the Lagrangian and the Lagrangian approach, actually, if it is also an isometry, then the symmetry yields constants of motion which are associated to, conser to conserve not, uh, nodal currents. If a given symmetry of the dynamics under the, 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 the given group G is not a symmetry for this auxiliary geometric structure, that is to say, if this symmetry of the equation of motion is not an isometry, but the violation is governed by the moray cartan structure equation of the Dreamfeld double dual associated to G, then we see that the symmetry of the dynamics is a Poisson-Lee symmetry. So, this is the condition that has to be verified in order to talk about Poisson Lee symmetry. Uh, we will see this more explicitly later on. So um, let's, uh, uh, for simplicity, go to the the Hamiltonian approach. So uh, if we make the assumption that the dynamics is invariant under the action of a given Lee group, then it means that the Hamilton, the Hamilton equation of the motion are, uh, are unchanged. So this means that for a certain observable, uh, we have that uh, the equation of motions um, are invariant. So this is the, the Poisson tensor and H is the Hamiltonian. Now, there are certain invariant under a given uh, Lie group action with the infinitesimal generators XA if both lambda, for example, the symplectic structure or also the symplectic form uh, omega and H are invariant. So they, if they satisfy uh, this uh, equation. And, and this equation implies conserved quantities, of course, defined by this relation, but this is only a sufficient condition. In which sense? Um, in order for the dynamics to be invariant, both the Poisson brackets and the Hamiltonian might, might be modified in such a way that the daily derivative is not zero, but in, uh, in such a way that the equation of motion does not change. So in terms of the symplectic form, this implies that this form now uh, obtained by contracting along XA, the, the symplectic form, is not an exact form anymore. So this means that the, uh, the, 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 the theta A is different from zero, and this does not define a constant motion. But if theta A, this form, is such that is uh, um, D, can be written in this way in terms of this constant structure, of the structure constant of the Dreamfeld double, then the symmetry of the dynamics under the action of G is said, is, uh, is called Poisson Lee symmetry. And the one forms associated to the infinitesimal generators of the group G, of the G symmetry, through the symplectic form, are just the Morier Cartan one forms of the dual group G tilde. 
So this is the condition that has to be uh, satisfied in order to talk about post-only duality. So uh, uh, post-only symmetry, sorry. So once a post-only symmetry is found for a given dynamical model under the action of a Lie group G, then one can construct a model with a different target space, which is acted on by the dual group G tilde. And if this model possesses a Poisson-Li symmetry as well, so um, if also in this case the one forms associated to the infinitesimal generators of G tilde this time through its symplectic form omega tilde are the Morel Cartan one forms for G, then the two, the, the, the two models are dual to each other, and the symmetry under this duality is called invariance under Poisson-Li duality. So what should be, what this means, for example, for this, the string? So for the Boson C model in a target space M with GB background uh, constant, one requires that the target space to admit the free action of a group G. So we can write the action for simplicity in this way. Uh, if uh, we, um, by varying the action with respect to the coordinates, in this way, so uh, these are the left invariant vector fields on the target space and epsilon are infinitesimal parameters of the transformation, we get nether currents and uh, we, can, we have the, the, the general expression of the variation of S under this kind of transformation of the coordinates. Now, standard Tidwhite approach means that the closest current one fourth JA um, they, are they, are, they are close, so they, they, mm, their d has to be zero. And this follows, of course, from the requirement that, uh, the, um, that the uh, Lie derivative with respect to VA of E must be zero. Um, so um, this is the requirement. Uh, so this means also that um, Besides an invariance of the dynamics, besides an invariance of the equation motion, we must have also an invariance of the geometry structure. So the left invariant vector fields have to be killing vectors in this case, and T-duality is along a direction of isometry. So this is the standard picture where isometry is the funding ingredient. In the presence of a symmetry of the dynamics, which is not an isometry, then the currents are not close, and if they obey the onshore integrability condition written this way, so where these are the constant structure of Dili algebra G tilde corresponding to the, to the dual Lie group in the sense of Dreamfeld, then the theory uh, should have a poisson Lie symmetry. So poisson Lie duality in contrast to the abelian and abelian version uh, does not require isometry, as I have said also previously. It is a more general version of T duality since the abelian and the non-abelian version are particular cases. Um, if isometries are present, then the dual Lie group is abelian, and we have that the, this relation, the, the, the currents are closed. Formally, the integrability condition is the Morel Cartan equation for the current one forms on the dual group. And if we consider the left invariant vector fields on the Lie, on the Lie group G, um, by using the commutators of the Lie derivatives along these fields, we can. Uh, recover the Lie algebra of, of G. Now, the, uh, the variation of E, that is G plus B, along left invariant vector fields, when combined with this commutation relation, provides a compatibility relation between the structural constants of the two Lie algebra, and actually this characterize, this, this uh, the particular combination, this characterize a Lie algebra structure. Uh, it requires then that these two algebra to be maximally isotropic subalgebra of a Dreamfeld double. And uh, so this is re the reason why Dreamfeld doubles are the main objects underlying the Poisson Lie duality. So, in order to obtain Poisson Lie dual models, one has to investigate the possibility of building a model on a target space which is acted upon by the group G tilde and study its symmetries. So um, this is the reason why we have considered two 
uh, simple model. I'd say that one is really very um, naive, maybe. This is the three-dimensional isotropic rigid rotor. And, uh, but the other one, the principal current model, is uh, uh, revealed to be a very instructive example. So, um, <coughs> let me uh, only sketch uh, a little bit you know, this, uh, the, the main properties of these two models. Uh, let's start from the three-dimensional isot isotropic rigid rotor. Uh, so uh, we consider this like, of course, this is a three-dimensional object in, um, and it's investigated as a zero plus one field theory. Uh, the model is defined of the group manifold SU2, so its dynamics exhibits Poisson Lee symmetries when described in the Hamiltonian approach by replacing the cotangent space of SU2 with SL2C, which plays the role of the alternative phase space of the model. And uh, the model in the dual group does not describe the same dynamics. This is something that uh, appears in this model, but paves the way to a field a theory generalization, the principal current model of SU2 and its dual partner. So uh, we can say that this is only a toy model where um, some key features of Poisson Lee symmetries and Poisson Lee duality uh, emerge uh, quite clearly. Um, um, so the action of this model is given by uh, is, is this one. So we have here uh, this G is an, is an element, is a function from R to SU2. So this is the morel cartan left invariant one form that is Lie algebra valued. Alpha K are the basic left invariant one forms. Um, so this is uh, the star here is the odd star operator on the source space R. So, and the trace is the trace of the Lie algebra. So this is a group value field theory, reduction of the principal current model actually to, to one dimension, essentially. So this uh, Lagrangian is defined in terms of the non-degenerate invariant scalar product on SU2. And uh, there is an invariance under both left and right action of SU2. Um, we can explicitly give a parameterization of the element of, of, the element of SU2 um, so we can uh, give some coordinates on tangent bundle and uh, um, we can have a question of motion that implies the conservation of the left generalized velocity. Uh, on the, um, uh, if we go to the, um, uh, if we uh, describe uh, within the Hamiltonian formulas, this object say we, we have uh, of course, we, we need the, the cotangent band of SU2 uh, that is isomorphic to the um, direct sum of SU2 and R3. So the coordinates are QI and II, being II the left momentum. We define the um, so we, the, 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 the coordinates in this case are the base, the base space coordinates associated with the, the orientation of the rotor while the fiber coordinates are associated with the angular momentum components as expected. And uh, uh, the Legend transformation gives the Hamiltonian that written simply in this way. Um, and from the, uh, from the, 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 um, Symplectic form, we can get canonical Poisson brackets for this on, uh, uh, on uh, uh, the cotangent, sp uh, cotangent space of SU2. Um, also, in this case, so we can consider the equation of motion that actually uh, represents the, 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 the constants of the II, uh, and uh, while G uh, undergoes a uniform precession. Now, since the Lagrange and the Hamilton are invariant under right and left SU2 action, right moment are conserved as well, being the model superintegrable. As a group, T star SU2 uh, is isomorphic to the semi-direct product of SU2 and R3, and the Lie algebra is given, is given by the semi-direct sum of SU2 and R3 with these Lie brackets. Um, so, uh, we can say that the, the cotangent bundle is actually the, the uh, most direct example of the infant double, since it is obtained by exponentiating the semi-direct sum of, of two Lie algebras. 
Um, so this is, uh, of course, the algebra connected to R3, and this is the algebra connected to S2, to SU2. Um, but more general structure actually could be obtained by deforming this R3 to a non-abelian Lie algebra. And actually, the T star SU2 can be replaced by the Dreamfeld double group of SU2, since we have seen that SL2C is a Dreamfeld double that can be decomposed in SU2 and SB2C. We can think of deformating RR3 in such a way uh, that T star SU2 can be replaced by the Dreamfeld double uh, given by SL2C. So, um, and this is actually what we have done. We have um, defined a dual model on, uh, on SB2C. Uh, so we have considered the same structure of the Lagrangian, or the original Lagrangian or, on SU2, um, but in terms now of a function G tilde defined in T and having value in SB2C, uh, we have introduced the, the Moray-Cartan left invariant one form for this group. And, uh, um, what, uh, and the, 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 the Lagrangian is now defined in terms of the second scalar product that we have uh, available on, uh, on, the, on the B algebra. Uh, so we can, but this action uh, actually different from the Lagrangian of the rigid rotor um, that is invariant under both left and right actions of both groups. In this case, we have that this action is only uh, invariant under left SB2C uh, action. Also in this case, we can go on with the same kind of um, analysis, uh, but uh, as I said previously, we found equations of motion that actually, uh, apparently at least, seems not, um, uh, so they reflect the non-invariance uh, non of the Lagrangian under the right action, but they have a completely different structure from the equation of motion that we have found in the case of rotor, the, or the rotor. Um, on SU2, um, but we can anyway go on in this uh, uh, on this uh, description, and um, what uh, what we can find also in this case we we can find Poisson brackets um, starting from the uh, symplectic form also in this case. And from the Poisson bracket, of course, we can find the Hamiltonian equation that, is, uh, again, they put in evidence the non-invariance of the Hamiltonian and the right SB2C action. What, uh, so as a, a group now, the cotangent bundle SB2C is uh, isomorphic to this semi-direct product. So um, these are the, the, this is the Lie algebra. And, um, but what we have shown is that the two models can be obtained from the same parent action that we can define on the whole SL2C. So in this sense, we can say that, this, that they are dual. So uh, the goal uh, is to define a dynamical model symmetric under the exchange of SU2 and SB2C on the Driffel double SL2C. Um, I, I don't want to give detail about that. So we have done this. We have considered, uh, we have introduced on, uh, on um, TSL2C double coordinates. Uh, we have defined left invariant one form on the group uh, in uh, generalizing in this way. Um, and um, uh, we have proposed an action that actually is constructed in terms of the two invariant scalar products that we have previously uh, introduced. And we have actually an action like that appears like that. So the action on, on the double action on SL2C uh, is written in terms of uh, the um, generalized metric and the generalized metric and the ODD invariant metric once again. So, thank you. So this strictly reminds the double action by settling, essentially. Um, and from this, uh, uh, from this action, uh, if we fix a local decomposition for the elements of the double group SL2C in this way, with, uh, in a product of two, ele two elements, one belonging to S2 and the other one belonging to SB2C, 
what is possible to see is that uh, this double action is invariant under left and right action of the group SU2, but uh, only, after, uh, only f uh, under left action of the group SB2C. Um, and if we promote the SB2CL invariance to a gauge symmetry for, um, if we promote this to a gauge symmetry, uh, actually we get the usual description of the rotor. While uh, if we promote the global invariance of L and the right action of the group SU2, we get the dual rotor. So this double action actually um, generates the two uh, models um, by, gauging, uh, by gauging their former uh, global symmetries. But also it's interesting in the Hamiltonian formalism, I, I would like only to say that um, or in, in, the, in the Hamiltonian formula, we can give a Poisson, a B algebra, so the B algebra structure of this, uh, uh, of the, um, uh, that, the, on which we are working, induces Poisson structure on SL2C. And uh, uh, this uh, B algebra structure can be uh, inferred from uh, this, uh, from these uh, brackets written by these people. Uh, and involving classical young baxter matrix. So uh, what is interesting to see is that if I consider uh, the uh, Poisson brackets according to this definition, for example, for one element of SB2C, actually we can recover uh, the, 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 the Poisson brackets of the cotangent bundle of SU2. So we can uh, what, what happens here is that the momentum variables of each model actually inherit their Poisson brackets from the ones of the dual group. Of the dual group. So in this sense, this is a Poisson symmetry. So um, this seems to be a, a, an important point of this model, even if we have seen that the, the, the equation of motion that we have uh, derived in both the models seems not to be uh, equivalent, but we can say that they are dual from this point of view. Uh, very shortly, let me only say that on the con when we go to the principal current model, we find on the contrary a, a rich structure, a richer structure with respect to, rot to, 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 to the rotor. So the principal current model is actually a two-dimensional field theory with target space given by the group G and so space given by the two-dimensional space R11, so that has this flat matrix defined on it. So um, the, um, this is the, the, the action. And um, of course, if we uh, want to uh, consider the analogy with uh, the rotor, we consider SU2 as a target space. And the action can be written in, the, in this way. These are the, the error Lagrange equations. And this can be written in terms of two first order partial differential equations for current, uh, like it happens for integrable, integrable systems. So we have these two uh, currents in terms of which the Lagrangian can be simplified in this way. And um, the equation motions are this one. So the second equation motion can be considered like an integrability condition for the ex existence of G in uh, uh, this way. And, uh, um, um, so at, uh, uh, at, at, uh, if we fix the value of t, all the elements g satisfy the boundary these boundary conditions form an infinite dimensional group gr that is uh, given by the smooth maps uh, g from sigma in uh, belonging to r in g sigma in, uh, in the group, which are constant at infinity. Um, what... Uh, um, so um, we can make an analysis of this model, uh, and the dynamics actually is given in terms of uh, these two currents, J and A, with A, B, uh, A plays the role of the left generalized velocity, and J plays the role of the left configuration space coordinates. These are the infinitesimal generators of the algebra, uh, but what I want to, uh, to stress is that um, so we write the Hamiltonian, but we find in this, in this 
in this, ca in this case, we find actually um, that we can give a de description of the dynamics in terms of a new Poisson algebra and the modified Hamiltonian with the current, with the currents playing a symmetry role. And the, this, uh, these uh, brackets are given by these expressions, uh, which are deformed by a parameter tau. So we don't change the, 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 the equation of motion, of course, when we do this operation. But um, we can actually, it's possible to see that uh, modifying uh, the Poisson brackets in this way, we can, we have a modified Hamiltonian that uh, reduces to the original Hamiltonian in this limit. And um, these new brackets that we have defined correspond to the infinite dimensional Lie algebra SL2CR which for imaginary value of tau is isomorphic to the current algebra modeled on the Lorentz algebra SL to C. So starting from SU2, we have considered, uh, we have, uh, we have um, written a Poisson algebra on SL to C. So, um, and, and uh, one can define new generators actually that show the B algebra structure of the Lie algebra. So if we define this, uh, these generators, uh, if we def define this uh, uh, linear combination of J and I, we can, um, we can derive uh, these Poisson brackets for, for these objects. So we see that these objects actually span the SB2C Lie algebra. So um, in a sense, we have started from SU2, uh, from the, from the, 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 the model defined in SU2, and we have found a, 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 a we have found um, uh, we have selected uh, the, the, the part of the subalgebra that is uh, connected to, to SB to CR. So in this way, um, what what we show is that this, the SU2 model is completely described by the one parameter family of Hamiltonian functions, this one. And again, the Hamiltonian function can be written in terms of Riemannian, of this Riemannian matrix that has the same structure of the, uh, of the, the, the generalized matrix introduced already in the string case and also in the case of the rotor. Um, so there exists a, a whole family of models labeled by this parameter tau, which are related to the standard c 2 caral model by the linear transformation that is a no tree tree transformation. And uh, um, so in, in this way, this model is a Poisson Lie Sigma model because we have put in uh, correspondence the Lie algebra for SU2 essentially with the SB2C and vice versa, one can show uh, the, the, the inverse. And once you have this correspondence, then you can think of create, you can construct a model defined on, on the whole SB2C. Uh, and just as we've done, we done for the, the rotor, you can uh, have one of the two models gauging suitable uh, symmetries. Okay, uh, sorry that it was a bit... Uh, uh, so, conclusion, after reviewing aspects of abelian duality in string theory, uh, I am, the notion of possibility duality has been introduced, so two models have been analyzed. We are considering now an extension uh, of the principal Carroll model with the West Tumino uh, term. This is a working project that could be interesting because uh, there are um, geometric structure of the interior on IDS3 that can be studied maybe with this, uh, through this model. And these are interesting from the point of view of the SCFT correspondence. Uh, further extension to the work with string action can, uh, can be done and uh, hopefully they can shed light on the nature of the non-geometric backgrounds. Thank you. Thank you.